Hey guys, uh, welcome to part 5 of my tutorial series. And in this part, we'll be uh, making our texture maps, composing in Photoshop, and then we'll apply our texture, our diffuse, a normal map on the uh, our game model. So I'll, we'll be using XNormal to bake our maps. And as you can see here, I'm showing some settings that I'm using. So make sure you have the same settings as you see here. And uh, I'll start by importing. We'll start by importing our uh, low poly mesh of the body, which we exported from uh, Blender in the previous part. Uh, as you can see here. Then uh, we'll also import our high poly mesh, uh, which we exported from uh, ZBrush. So make sure it's only the body and not the eyes. Uh, you need to have them separately. And then I also made a new folder for the texture maps and uh, set the directory from uh, the xnormal. So output file and make sure you have a, a folder for your maps and uh, just name it uh, whatever you think it fits. And I'll usually start by using the ray distance calculator to kind of make a, a cage for my mesh. And that usually gives me a bit better result when I'll be baking the maps. So usually when I wait a bit and then press stop and copy results and I'll make basically a, a cage for your uh, mesh and uh, I start by baking the uh, normal map, ambient occlusion and the cavity map so the fuse will come later so you can see here uh, we got the normal map detail from our high poly sculpt and it baked into our UVs that we made for our low poly mesh, and as you can see, it it got quite some nasty uh, errors or these artifacts, as you can see there, and that can and usually we'll get them, but in this case, I got quite a lot of them, and that was probably because I made the game mesh with using zero mesher. So if you have your own topology, you made your own topology yourself, you usually get a cleaner results. And uh, to clean up these side effects, I usually just use the healing brush inside Photoshop. This works pretty well, and it goes pretty pretty quick. You know, it's, it's really simple. But you know, like I said, if you make the if you retopology make the retopology yourself on your high poly mesh, you, you'll you'd probably get a cleaner results when baking maps. So that's another good thing about making the retopology yourself instead of using zero mesher. So, but you know, you, you'll still probably get some of these uh, artifacts, it's quite common, and you usually have to clean it up yourself, but you know, it's not too hard. Usually takes only about 5 minutes or, or so to clean it up. And in this part, I actually won't be showing how to make the specular, but I will show how to make a specular map in the future part. So, just so you know. But in this part, we'll just make the normal map and the diffuse. So here, I sped up the process. It's it's not really much to know, you know, just pretty straightforward. Just clean up. Using the heel brush, I believe it's called heel, br heel brush, but no, I might be wrong. So I usually add also a background there. As you can see, I made a new layer behind the normal map and just picked a color that was kind of bluish, so it, so the background isn't uh, transparent. And you, you don't want to do that on the same layer as the other normal map. Just to make a new layer under the normal map layer and just add your background color and the same process pretty much when it comes to cleaning up it, I usually I also got it on the ambient occlusion map and the cavity map but you know it's it's the same process of cleaning it up 
and I didn't show how I cleaned up the cavity because it's like I said it's the same process so you can just do it yourself and now you bake the diffuse and you want to uncheck your cavity normal and AO uh, boxes and just check the vertex color as you saw there and you can you need to also go into high definition meshes and then check that ignore vertex the uh, paint I think it's called box in your high definition meshes and then you bake the uh, and then it'll bake the uh, poly paint from our high poly mesh that we made skins here and it also got some nasty artifacts but you know it's the same process for cleaning it up so you know you can just do it quickly yourself as I already showed how I did it on the normal map and, um, now I'll start composing our map so as you can see here I have uh, my uh, diffuse there I also made the background under and usually want your background to be dark but you know I'll talk about that later as of now I'm gonna talk about uh, what I'm using here and I'm basically just doing the same process as I did before but just uh, imported my eyes mesh and on the high poly and the low poly and I only baked the uh, poly paint I didn't bother doing the normal map and the uh, AO and the cavity since I usually don't need that so you know it's the same process you know you import your high poly and your low poly mesh you uh, use the ray distance calculator for a few seconds there until you see uh, uh, some sort of values there and copy results and then make sure you also name it at make it the new name so it doesn't overwrite your uh, body texture maps and, and you just click uh, generate and here we go we have our eyes so I'll make a new layer above the uh, diffuse for the body then I'll uh, open the eyes separately or first I use the place but uh, just for the oh yeah I think I use only place it worked well and place the eyes correctly and here you can see I added my uh, AO there on top and made it the multiply layer and then I also did the same on the cavity there but cavity usually makes it really dark so I usually take it down to about 30 40 percent so it doesn't become too dark as you can see there no it's, it's fairly simple and then I'll what I also do is I usually use the normal map to add a different kind of cavity by using the filter X normal and then normal normals to cavity and that'll basically make a cavity out of your normal map and you should get this uh, option to do this if you have the X normal so here as you can see it gave me this cavity which is a bit different from what we baked and I usually put that on top but since it didn't quite put it exactly on where I wanted I'm gonna show you how I made it so that it places the layer exactly on where I want uh, you'll see that soon so I just go went back to my cavity here and I just painted in some color there on those corners and then I copied and then when I uh, pasted it here it placed them exactly on top of my uh, UV islands where I wanted so that's good to know and then I just made it move added use the multiply uh, mode and as you can see here it added some uh, extra details there you know so I usually use this method to and you know you can also add in the textures if you want in Photoshop if you want more detail you know you can adjust even the colors or the saturation you know feel free to adjust it to whatever you need but I just usually go with the default detail from my poly paint that's it's usually enough for me but, you know if you want you can still add in some more texture detail using textures from CG or whatever you use and to export I use the uh, DDS format as you can see here Make sure you have those options, and to do this, you usually you need the DDS plugin, 
for your Photoshop, and I think I'll include the link for that in the uh, description. So now I exported my uh, diffuse uh, texture map, and I'll do the same for the uh, normal map here. So now we have our diffuse and our normal map, and uh, we can apply that to our uh, low poly mesh inside Blender. And I'm going to show that shortly. So now I'm in Blender again, and I'm going to start by making a, adding a material to it take it down usually or at first I you need to uh, make sure your eyes and your uh, body is together as one mesh so just select your eyes and body and press ctrl J to join them together then I'll add the material uh, take down the specularity of it and then I'll start by importing my diffuse there and you want to make sure it's uh, the image uh, uh, the, uh, coordination I believe yes coordination is set to UV and then in your shading you want to make sure it's GSLL and then you want to make sure you are in texture mode and uh, then you can add a Hemi light to see your texture and as you can see here it, it uh, worked out pretty well you know? uh, but, uh, and then I'll add the normal map Make sure you check. Uh, you have for normal map. You need to have a bit different settings. So, in the image sampling, make sure you have your normal map box uh, checked. Then you want to uncheck that color box and then check the normal map box there in geometry. And now you can see our low poly mesh has the normal map and the diffuse map applied. And now we can actually move our mesh and scale it. Uh, but you know, like I think I—I I don't think I said, but I—I I wrote that you need to—you can't really—you you can't move your uh, mesh or scale it up before baking your maps. So, and now I'll use the grunt as a scale to scale my monster, and then I'll also import the doorway to see to make it proper size. As you can see here. The doorway now. And I just scale him up so he fits through the doorway. Uh, it's okay if the arms go through, since it, the pose won't be like that, and when he's animated, so you know I, uh, this worked pretty well. And then you want to apply your location, your rotation, and your scale. So the origin point is at the bottom there. And then I'll export him as uh, OBJ. I'll actually make a new folder. And uh, when you export this mesh, you'll be we'll be using it in Maya when we'll be rigging and animating. So I'll just name the folder Monster Tutorial uh, uh, Maya. So then I know that this uh, OBJ file will be used for the Maya. So. Uh, Make sure you have a selection only check there, the bottom left, in your setting, export settings. And uh, then you should be pretty good to go with, uh, as you can see there, uh, make sure you have the same options enabled. Now we'll export it, and uh, so now our model is pretty much ready to be rigged and animated. So. We'll see you in the next part.